I see Bitcoin L1 as a safe where you store your valuables. You store your bank documents, you store your money. And whenever you want to use those valuables, you take it out of the safe and you use it. But whenever you want to use your native assets, you won't be able to do that on Bitcoin L1 at the same scale as you can do it on Bitcoin L2. And what we are doing at Velar is we are building this infrastructure for you to Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Bitcoin Builders Breakdown. I'm your host, Kyle Elika, and we've got another builder within the Bitcoin economy to share with you their journey, their insights, and their thoughts on the greater Bitcoin ecosystem. We're talking everything from the core Bitcoin network all the way up through the Bitcoin layers and all the way to the application layer providing education to you, those builders out there, and hopefully some inspiration if you're looking to start a project or join uh, a team as well. That said, let's go ahead and get started. Mahil, welcome. Uh, a short introduction on yourself, and then I got a handful of questions so we can educate this crowd today. Very excited to be here, Kyle, uh, and very good to meet you again. Uh, it's been an honor. You have been supporting us from day one. Uh, always good to meet you. Hey, you too. And I love the uh, the sweatshirt you've got as well. I know you and the team wow. rock those at every co conference. So it looks looks great today. Thank you for wearing it. We have some more of that coming. Some more new words coming. Awesome. Well, the hell, let's just kind of kick it off. I mean, we're talking to builders, talking to you and your team as developers in the ecosystem. What made you and the team choose to enter the Bitcoin ecosystem when beginning the journey of Valor? Uh, awesome. So, so for me, it's a, it's, it's a personal problem that I was facing, right? And so before Velar, I was running a hedge fund, uh, called Terra Search Capital, where we used to do coin margin perps trading on centralized exchanges. So uh, our USP in the fund was that we used to give, uh, our CAGR to our LPs in Bitcoin and ETH denominations. So people, so our LPs were people who were holding long-term Bitcoin holders. And they wanted to earn yield on top of their Bitcoin and generate more Bitcoins. They didn't want to sell or buy Bitcoins, you know, to make profits. So uh, we used to do that on centralized exchanges. But in 2022, when FTX went down and BlockFi went down, all these LPs, they lost trust on centralized custodians. So when we started looking into more uh, in, into other options, uh, there were no there were literally no options. So if you wanted to generate yield on top of your Bitcoin, uh, there was no way to generate yield on top of, your, on top of your Bitcoin in native Bitcoin environment in a non-custodial way. And and the whole point of crypto when it was born is is that, you know, like is, is to propagate the idea of self-custody, decentralization. So we saw this huge gap where there was no native DeFi uh, environment at scale uh, in the Bitcoin ecosystem. And, uh, and it was a problem statement that we were facing and we, we decided to solve that. Well, and, and and that said, you and I were talking a little bit ago offline about the growing opportunity around Bitcoin, DeFi, or decentralized finance. Uh, what does that opportunity look like for you now that you've been in this ecosystem? What does Bitcoin DeFi look like for you? So definitely, things changed quite a lot in the last few months, right? But when we started, we started Velar. We started the idea of Velar in February 2023. Uh, at that time, Bitcoin was around four five hundred billion dollars in market cap. It was still around forty to fifty percent of entire crypto market cap. So, uh, considering the business side of it, like there was still this huge amount of liquidity sitting completely dormant, uh, which was not being used to generate any yield on top of it. So, the entire DeFi ecosystem that we saw build in EVM and all tail ones, they were just focused on. 50% uh, of the crypto market by, while the other 50% was sitting completely dormant. So that, that's the business opportunity which has grown twice from that, uh, from that point in less than a year. It's $800 billion right now and it's just immense because if you see EVM TVL today, it's 55 to $60 billion. Uh, even if you bring 10% of Bitcoin into DeFi where people can generate yield on top of their Bitcoin holdings without spending it, but in a non-custodial way in native Bitcoin DeFi environment, it's still $80 billion, which is much more than entire EVM TVL, right? So this opportunity is just mind-boggling to us, uh, and we just jumped right in. Well, and, and speaking of that, again, you've been now almost a year into this journey. What are some of the key elements 
to your growth, you know, from a development and technical angle to uh, maybe even a marketing angle? What does that process look like for, for you and the team? So we did a lot of research before we went to market um, in, in, in technical things also and in go-to-market strategies as well. I think from technical standpoint, because we chose Stax, uh, Stax is one of the best solutions out there. It's, I think, a very unique tech stack in itself. So there is a learning curve if you talk from the technical standpoint. And that's why like starting early uh, has even helped us because anyone who's starting to develop on Bitcoin on Stacks, there will be a learning curve because it's a different tech stack uh, from Solidity coming over to Clarity. So so uh, so that's, I think, I, I wouldn't say a barrier to entry. But we are yet to hit a critical mass of developers in the ecosystem where we see a lot of apps come popping out every day. But recently we saw a few meme coins coming on stacks. So that is changing. So, you know, there is a there is a whole set of meme tokens coming on stacks. There are new to new projects coming on stacks like liquid staking. I think that will bring a lot of uh, that will attract a lot of developer community as well. So that's from technical standpoint, from marketing standpoint. Uh, so what I have, what so I did this research where I saw that <clears throat> why Bitcoin DeFi didn't scale until now. Me personally, according to me uh, personally, is that a lot of the time, a lot of the Bitcoin DeFi apps they tried to convince Bitcoin maxis, uh, so-called Bitcoin maxis and 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 Bitcoin whales to try to use DeFi, but they couldn't, they weren't able to convince. The thing is that what we did different with uh, with our go-to-market strategy is that we focused a lot on EVM users because for two f primary reasons. Uh, the first being that EVM users are much more aware of how DeFi works, how DeFi infrastructure works, and they are much more uh, aware of the user journey because they try out different chains and networks all the time. And also they are open to try out new and different chains as they come by, you know. Uh, so that was the reason we targeted EVM DeFi community and also because there are not many users right now in Bitcoin ecosystem. So, so for us, it made sense to, uh, to, to grow the pie instead of, uh, trying to, you know, win a larger piece of the already existing pie, which is very small. And, and you mentioned, uh, some <clears throat> new token standards, some, some experimental uh, tokens that maybe uh, have recently made to service. I'm curious on your thoughts of these new experiments. And I, I use the term experiment as uh, these token standards have just come to market in the last anywhere from 30 to 90 days. They're very new, very experimental. Things are still evolving from a technical standpoint. Uh, what are your thoughts on seeing this uh, really rapid progression of token standards within the Bitcoin layers ecosystem, everything from BRC 2721E to uh, runes and, and much more. We'd love to hear your thoughts on that. I think, I think there are two economies being developed on Bitcoin right now, parallelly. One is an entire economy of, uh, uh, of things on Bitcoin native L1. And then around surrounding it, there is a whole economy of different mechanisms of Bitcoin layer twos coming. That's why we see a lot of token standards coming up. Uh, so I think on Bitcoin L1, uh, there are many token standards that came in last one to one and a half years, right? Like BRC20, SRC20, there is runes coming up. So all these things I think are, are, have definitely uh, some value. Uh, but because Bitcoin L1 has its own limitations, I think uh, they will somehow be, you know, like working together with the surrounding Bitcoin L2 ecosystem. Uh, that is also being developed. But when we talk about Bitcoin L2 ecosystem, of course, Tax uh, and, and Rootstock have an early more advantage, Rootstock being EVM compatible and Stax having its own independent tech stack. Uh, apart from that, we are going to see at least a dozen uh, Bitcoin L2s come in la in, in upcoming year. And, and a lot of these will be EVM compatible because the problem statement that we discussed that, you know, like <clears throat> when you talk about uh, independent tech stack like stacks, uh, there is a learning curve. And while we have already hundreds of thousands of developers and millions of users on the EVM ecosystem, so if you want to hit a critical mass of users and developers in the Bitcoin ecosystem, I think the best way to do that is to integrate this ecosystem with the already thriving EVM ecosystem. So that's why I think there are a few experiments going on in the ecosystem, but two major, uh, I think, play I see in... Um, 
in in the surrounding Bitcoin L2 layer landscape is is one being e, one being uh, EVM L2s and the other being independent tech stack like Stacks, which have their uh, which have their own trust minimized way of of proving Bitcoin finality for their transactions and also bridging assets between native Bitcoin L1 and L2. So I have this uh, I have this analogy which I recently uh, thought that I see Bitcoin L1 as uh, as how do you call it as as a safe where you store your valuables. You know you can store you store your bank documents, you store your money, you store your uh, an expensive painting for example. And whenever you want to use those valuables, you take it out of the safe and you use it. So I see Bitcoin native L1 as this safe where you store your valuable things because that is where the native security of your assets uh, lie. But whenever you want to use your native uh, assets uh, or your native valuable assets, you won't be able to do that on Bitcoin L1 at the same scale as you can do it on Bitcoin L2. That's why the conjunction of native Bitcoin L1, which provides the secure environment, while the scalability of scalability and programmability of upcoming Bitcoin L2s is very uh, is is imperative, I I think. And and what we are doing at Velar is we are building this infrastructure for you to make use of your valuable assets, which are on which I think if you want to use, you have to take it out of the safe. You can't keep your valuables in your safe and then and also use it at the same time right well and you mentioned evm uh, ethereum virtual machines and just the ethereum uh ecosystem and uh, you have talked about this in the past i want to open this up for a, a quick uh elaboration is uh your thesis around the bitcoin flipping and that's not that ethereum flips bitcoin but instead that bitcoin DeFi flips that of ethereum DeFi. And can you elaborate a little further on that thesis that you you have, uh, especially having noted uh, EVM throughout today's conversation? Yeah, for sure. So I think I I I don't see any any doubt in that. I think definitely we will see Bitcoin DeFi flipping Ethereum DeFi uh, very soon. Now I, I I would have had a different answer six months ago, but I think it can happen within twelve to eighteen months uh, max. Uh, the reason for the, I have two reasons for that. The first is just because of the sheer size uh, of of the Bitcoin uh, DeFi ecosystem, and I think we will see a snowball effect, like uh, you know, like when when so we are going uh, our our EMM mainnet very soon within a few weeks, and then we have the world's first uh, pub Dex on Bitcoin coming in in a few months. So when this happens, and when people see that they can use their Bitcoin in native Bitcoin secured, secured environment in a non-custodial way and generate yield on top of it, I think there will be a snowball effect of Bitcoin holders who will start to use their Bitcoin in uh, in in this native DeFi environment that, you know, like we and a lot of other projects are building together, different modules of it. Uh, and I think this will catapult into, into even, you know, like, as I said, like even 10 to 20% of Bitcoin coming to this, uh, this ecosystem will just, uh, will just be more than 2x or 3x of the entire EVM TVL. I'm not saying EVM won't grow. The, the the thing is that Bitcoin also will grow with it. And especially with the recent ETF approvals, we saw uh, BlackRock ETF uh, just within a week has 25,000 Bitcoins in its holding, in its ETF holding right now. So we are seeing this huge amount of uh, liquid Bitcoin, which is like getting sucked by this ETFs and already... We have around only 18 to 19 percent of entire Bitcoin holdings, which is on exchanges, which is already very less liquid, and it is getting more and more less liquid after the ETF approval. So I think this combined things will only make Bitcoin more and more uh, rare as an asset. Which I think, if everything, if of course depends on external global macro factors as well. But if right. things go well, then already Bitcoin has established itself as a store of value, and it will also grow in value. So I think. It's it's very natural for Bitcoin to uh, to to overtake Ethereum in a very short period of time, at least in the in the DeFi environment. The hell that's, 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 yeah, uh, I'm oh, sorry, no, that was my first, but I said two reasons. So if you want, I'll I'll, I'll tell the second reason as well. Please. The yeah. second, is, second reason is purely technical from my and it's my personal from my standpoint. I think uh, Bitcoin being on proof of work will not play a huge role in short term. What I said can happen. When I say short term, it means like uh, 12 to 24 months. But in long term, I think proof of work 
itself has as a as a consensus mechanism has established itself as the most battle tested and open for all decentralized uh, consensus mechanism to run an entire infrastructure of decentralized finance on top of it which i think will play a huge role in long term in establishing uh, bitcoin as 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 a as a as a base secure layer to store your valuable assets and when you want to use those valuable assets people will prefer to use it on your native bitcoin environment which is secured by this layer and they would they wouldn't want to bridge uh, their valuable assets onto a completely different chain with completely different security budget that's these are the two reasons i think uh, bitcoin defi will flip ethereum defi very very soon well Nathiel, thank you very much for for sharing that and and the journey of valor uh, thus far and i with that said, where can everyone go to learn more about Valor, get set up, and uh, also engage uh, with the application and the company? Thanks for asking. Uh, we are almost available on all platforms. So we, our, our website is called velar.co. It's velar.co. Uh, but we are very active on Discord, Telegram, and Twitter as well. Our Twitter is velarbtc. Uh, same goes for our Telegram channel and, and Discord. So uh, uh, me and my team, we are mostly available 24 seven, considering we are a global team. Uh, and yeah, you can find us on the website. You can go check out our AMM beta mainnet. It's first of its kind, Uniswap B2 inspired AMM. And we have uh, we have the full mainnet coming very soon. And we have the pub decks coming as well in a few months. Wonderful. Well, Mihail, thank you very much. And again, congratulations to you and the entire Valor team on your success thus far and wishing you more uh, as you continue to grow and develop. Uh, to all of you, thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate you uh, sh showing up for today's episode, but also a lot of things discussed today are experimental new technologies, and we do talk today on an educational basis. None of this is financial advice. Please do your own research. Again, education only. That said, I'm your host today, Kyle Ellicott. See you next time on... Bitcoin Builders Breakdown. Take care, everybody. Thank you.